Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. I'm really excited to film this video because it's been a hugely requested video actually and is probably one of my like most frequently asked questions and it's all about the pros and cons of going to the University of Greenwich. Like I always get asked what my favourite parts are and what the worst parts are or what bits I really enjoy so I just thought it's always the hardest question to answer because I could talk for so long about it so I thought I'd put it into its own little video for you and hopefully it helps answer a lot of your questions. I have been going to the University of Greenwich for four years now, I study events management and I've now graduated, I know I'm still, I'm still talking about it in the present tense but I graduated like a few weeks ago so I'm still not really used to it yet so I still feel like I'm a student there but I guess I'm not anymore but yeah I've been there for a while so I know quite a lot about it so you're in the right place if you are considering going to the University of Greenwich or you just want some more information um, and I have split this video into like the pros and the cons like everything obviously there are things I absolutely love about it I went there for four years I'm a big fan but there are also some things that I think could be improved or could work a little better and I always think there is room for improvement so don't take anything too negatively but these are just some things that I've kind of noticed over the years I guess but I'm going to start off with the pros because we're going to keep it positive and then I will just kind of follow up with some of the cons that I've noticed and I have got a list on my phone as per usual so let's grab that and get started. Okay so my first pro you can probably all guess if you've seen any of my other University of Greenwich videos but it is the building. Now this may not be a pro about the university itself but just the site, the campus, the buildings are just so so stunning and I know a nice building or a pretty building shouldn't really be your reasonings for going to a university but looking around it is what really sold it to me I could just really envisage myself there I don't know what it was it just had the right vibe I guess it's kind of like the whole surrounding area just felt really good so that was definitely a big pro for me and if you've seen any pictures or anything like that you'll know what I'm talking about it's very pretty there's just something about the heritage and like the whole site in itself that makes the place feel so special and really makes you kind of want to be on campus and want to be there and kind of experience it all firsthand which I found really helped like motivate me to go to class and things because you can take a good insta whilst you're there <laughs> but also it's just a really beautiful place to be especially on a glorious sunny day like today but yeah it's a really great place to be. The next pro is probably a pro about Greenwich in general but it's super well connected which I found really useful because I obviously wanted to go to a London University but I didn't want to be too in the heart of London like I always say I'm from a small seaside town so being right in the heart of the city was quite intimidating for me and I do find Greenwich is kind of a step out of the city I mean it's not as completely opposite Canary Wharf like it's so close to the city centre which helps because it's so well connected so you kind of feel like you're getting the best of both worlds in a sense so you've got the DLR which takes you to like Bank and Lewisham I think was the two different ends you can go and that runs very frequently they've also got like a hundred buses and night buses which is so useful especially for us students don't have the money for an uber going out on the town need a night bus they do usually take about an hour or so to get into the center because obviously we're on the south so you have to get over the river but completely worth it if you're trying to save some money i just spat everywhere which was lovely they also then of course have North Greenwich which has a tube station which is really handy, it's on the Jubilee line which obviously is my favourite line because it's the one I ride all the time but um, it was really handy to be able to go straight into Central really easy, I think it was like 20-30 minutes into London Bridge which is pretty central so that was really handy as well. Then you also have a boat, I don't know what it's called, Thameslink or is that a train? there's some kind of boat you can get I've only been on it once which is why I don't know the name of it it is quite expensive I think it's like seven pounds or so for a ride but it's really fun because you get to go up the Thames obviously and I think it takes you to Waterloo and things like there's different docks along the way I should probably research that a bit more before I started talking about it but that's another option we did it like on a date night and it was really really fun so another way you could travel obviously not the best for commuting to work and things but if you want to give it a go why not I'm forgetting one. Oh, and then there is the train. I knew I was forgetting something. There's the train station. So you have Greenwich train station and you also have Maze Hill, which is also pretty close to Greenwich station, um, depending on like where you're living and things. But both are very close to Greenwich Uni, which is super handy. And they go all over the place. So if you're commuting and you'd probably go to those train stations. But it was a really handy way for me when working in London Bridge. I think it took like 14 minutes or something on the train which was super super handy and I almost preferred it to getting the tube because you're above ground which I really like because you can see everything but yeah just another way you can 
get connected into London which I found really helpful especially when going to interviews and things all the time it was really well connected so it made it super easy. Then pulling back to the university itself rather than the area I think a huge pro for me being at the university has been the level of support that you're given like the amount of support available is really incredible like they have a department for pretty much everything if you're ever struggling they have a huge amount of people you can talk to they also have a website online I can never remember what it's called the blank wall I think and that's completely anonymous so you can put any issues you're having there with like your mental well-being or just your person in general and they have advisors and things that can help you out there they also have a business school which is completely there just to help you with your employability skills and working on your CV and everything like that which is hugely helpful because obviously moving from university into like the real world of like jobs and careers and things it's very intimidating so it's nice to have that support and you're also given a tutor every year which i really enjoyed because it almost made it feel a little bit the same as a levels in the sense like you have a person you can go to who is your tutor who will help you out and you can really start to build a relationship with that person which also helps if you want them as a reference on your cv but also just means you feel more comfortable speaking to them they know you they know who you are and you're not just like a face among the crowd you know they also have a lot of financial support which again is really useful and something i have benefited from i'm on the high achiever bursary they have a load of different bursaries and like funding for certain people in certain situations or certain circumstances they have a full list of them online so i definitely check those out because they have so many and i reckon you would probably qualify for like at least one i think they have one if you live like so many miles away they have one if you're like a single parent they have one if you make under a certain amount of money like they're really willing to help people out which is really really great oh actually another form of support that they do have is with a career mentoring scheme which i will talk about in another video later on but it's just where you get paired with someone in your industry already out in the working world who's had a lot of experience and i think you're with them for like six months or so and you have regular meetings with them just to learn about the industry they can help you with your cv and it's just a way to kind of start your networking i guess i was paired with someone from ey who had a load of events experience and that was really handy he was so so lovely we met up in coffee shops a couple of times i went to his office a few times and it would just be like an hour or so meeting like once a week or once every two weeks and we would just have a chat about what i was hoping to achieve in my future how he could potentially help me and work from there and he was a huge help in looking over my CV with me which was really really handy. My next pro has to be the library. I freaking loved the library. I spent a lot of hours in there. It is relatively new. I have no idea when it was built but it's pretty new and shiny which I really like but also means that the facilities in there are really up to date. They have rooms that you can book out so you can do group work like with your teams and stuff when you have presentations and things like that which are private and you just book them out so they're reserved for you which is really helpful they have a load of pcs in there and Macs, so you don't have to take your laptop with you but they do have laptops in there if you prefer working on a laptop um they have a load of seating and stuff and the floors are all split into different kind of zones so i think the main floor when you walk in is just kind of a general like chatty group work whatever you look fancy kind of space then downstairs is a quiet zone upstairs is a quiet zone and then it gets to a silent zone um which i found really helpful in third year first year i mainly stayed on the bottom floor because i didn't really mind about people chatting i was chatting i was having quite a fun time studying with my mates and things but when it came to third year i really needed to buckle down and obviously get my head in the game so i went on to the silent floor and i was actually one of those people who would be like excuse me this is the silent floor because I was just that try hard I guess I just wanted to do well and I need silence like I'm not one of those people who can watch tv and stuff whilst they're writing an essay so I found that super super handy but they also have loads of online sources for the library so you can find your books and stuff online which means you don't have to buy them which I really liked um, and mean, meant you could probably read them like wherever you wanted pretty much which was really handy and they have library services so you can book yourself in and the librarians or the people that work there will help you figure out how to use all the online sources how to research on online and everything like that like everyone's really there to help you which I guess is another form of support which was really really handy the library isn't actually on the campus it's kind of like across the road or so in like Greenwich but I didn't mind the short walk it wasn't anything major I think it probably took like two minutes to get to the university to, to get to the library and sometimes you would even have some tutorials or classes in there because one side was the library and the other side was kind of like art workshops for other students and then on top of that they had classrooms or lecture theatres so you could be in there for that as well. I should also probably mention that they have a Starbucks in there which is all student discounted so it's not a huge saving but just has a little bit of money off but makes it really fun if you want a, like a bit of a study break you can go grab a coffee and go back to your desk. 
Lastly, I think the biggest pro for me choosing the University of Greenwich was its reputation. I'm not sure what it stands like now, but at the time the University of Greenwich was really, really good when I joined and it was the number one in London for events management, which was obviously hugely helpful events management graduate very handy um but it also meant that it had a really great reputation among other like companies and things and it even had relationships with some companies where they would only hire from the university of greenwich or they would only offer placements to the university of greenwich and things like that so it meant it was just kind of had like a sense of ex exclusivity i guess because you had some better chances obviously other companies have other relationships with the university so you're probably missing out on those but it had its own which was nice and just knowing that people saw the university in a good light and would respect my degree more so because I went there kind of helped because I knew that you know where you study is quite important as well as what you study and what grade you got because I don't know just something about the reputation people like it you know in interviews people are like oh you studied at the University of Greenwich I'm like yes I did so it kind of helps but I'm not sure if that's changed since then um, because I know it gets updated like every year but I would definitely recommend checking out your university's reputation and how employers think of it and perceive it and things like that if you are considering going for a specific university f for a specific degree just see how well those pair up you can get like full lists of the top universities for your course I think my number one was Bournemouth University like in the whole of the UK but obviously I'm from Bournemouth so I didn't want to go there I wanted to move away from home experience something a little bit different so I chose University of Greenwich. Moving on to the cons and this is where I kind of like expose the University of Greenwich I guess or like spill the tea or whatever people want to say um some of these I guess are kind of brutal but they're just things I've noticed along the way which I felt I would want to know if I was thinking about going there so the number one thing I would say is probably like their policy making and like follow through has been quite slow um and I completely get it like the situation and circumstances we're in aren't the best and everyone's trying to figure out what the right thing to do is um but saying that this whole period of time has kind of and the situation we're in the circumstances and things has kind of made me realize how slow or like not advanced the University of Greenwich is at making policies and implementing them and the follow through so for example we had a no detriment policy introduced which was so handy and we were so grateful for but it was introduced um, two or three weeks into isolation which meant for those two or three weeks university students were getting crazy in the sense like they were so stressed so anxious no one knew what was going on people were struggling didn't feel like they had enough help with what was going on and I guess everyone was just trying to figure out what the best way to solve that issue was which happened to be a no detriment policy which was super handy but they sent out the information about the no detriment policy in maybe like a four or five line email like it was not it was just did not have a lot of detail it wasn't very it was informative I guess but it wasn't detailed like people had so many questions from the response from this like tiny email which is a huge thing to get obviously because they're basically telling people what their grades are um but yeah it was just very like blasé even though the situation was obviously quite intense i guess um and then from that basically the no detriment policy meant whatever your average grade was before would be your grade for your graduation even if the essays and assignments you did below dropped it wouldn't matter you would keep that average score you couldn't go below your average score but you could go higher so you could still boost your grade up if you did well um but no one told us how to work out our average grade because obviously it's not just like oh i did three essays and so i just add them together and divide by three great you've got 20 percent of your grade made up by second year and then you've potentially got five courses each with two or three assignments which each have different weighting so to work it out is actually a very intense and like time consuming thing and obviously no one's saying like oh yeah that's right and no one could tell us what our average grades were i still don't know what my average grade was i think i worked out to a 72 but obviously no one's told me that that's right i'm not the great greatest at maths so that could be wrong but it was really difficult because we had messaged on the university facebook page and said like oh is this right is this wrong like how do we work it out and our course leader had said oh ask your tutors they'll be able to tell you what it was but then when we emailed our course tutor they said oh we haven't been given any information about how to work this out or how this is being calculated so i don't want to give you any false information at this time so it was just like everyone was kind of shifting the information to the next person like i'll talk to that person i'll talk to that person and it was just very confusing so that's the biggest con i've realized of recent or experienced of recent is just kind of 
their follow through with policy making like everything should have already been sorted up until that point they should have almost like sent out an email with the students average grade on it because that would have just cleared up a lot of confusion and a lot of questions sure it would have been time consuming obviously but I think it was time consuming for them having to deal with everyone's concerns after the fact so that's something I've noticed I do understand it because no one's been in this situation before but just something to consider I guess if this kind of thing were to ever occur again or they needed to implement a new policy very quickly it might be kind of difficult. The next thing I have noticed actually really annoyed me when I found it out but I don't know if it's kind of like a bit of a first world problem and not really that important but the university is old I've already said that but it consists of like four buildings and then a kind of student hub building so there's like technically five buildings on the campus Within those five buildings, there is one water fountain, which is in the newest building in like the student hub, which I just find a bit ridiculous because obviously people are coming in with refillable water bottles and things. And all of the students in the University of Greenwich, don't know how many that is, put it on screen here, have to drink from that one water fountain to fill up their bottle. And it just wasn't really realistic. So obviously if you're in, on the third floor of one building on the other side of campus, to get all the way to that other building to fill up your water bottle and then go back for your next lecture would probably be like a 15-20 minute ordeal which just seems kind of silly to me because a lot of people felt just like it was easier or more time efficient like everyone's under a time crunch in uni everyone's got stuff to do to just buy a new bottle of water so I think if they introduce more water fountains it would be really beneficial just to like the sustainability of the university I guess but yeah something kind of weird which I was kind of shocked when I found out the next thing branches off of my first pro but it's the building the building is old I freaking love the building I don't care that it's old I'll take an old building any day but because it's old it does mean that some of the facilities are limited because it's a heritage site which basically means it's got kind of a protection around the building there's only so many things you can do and if you want to do any renovations or replace something you have to apply to the government or to the council to be able to do that it's like quite a lengthy process which means that some of the classrooms are kind of average in the sense like they don't have all the top facilities because they've been limited with what carpets and what tables and what chairs and what screens and stuff they can use so the facilities are fine they're good enough I use them didn't have a problem but I'm sure if you were doing like a more intense or like technological course or something it could kind of hinder you and it also meant like in winter and stuff sometimes the building was a bit chilly or there'd be like a leak or something and obviously all the staircases are super old and stuff but yeah I never had a problem with it but I know that's something people are really concerned about and I think it probably would have been like better I guess going to a more modern university because you have all of those new facilities but I don't feel like my degree suffered because of it my SD card just ran out sorry <laughs> Um, so the next one would be the nightlife. Now I was someone who wanted to go to a university with a good nightlife because I knew that was quite an important part of the university experience I guess or a big part of it um, and I just wanted to have some fun whilst I was at university but I will say Greenwich does not have much nightlife. They have a few pubs and things which is really lovely to go like get a drink on an evening or things but if you're looking for like clubs and things it's pretty limited. There is obviously the student union which has different nights on and stuff which can be super social and there's also Belushi's I think it's called which turns into a bit of a club kind of vibe but it's like kind of like a sports bar turned club so it's kind of not the best but basically obviously London has so many nightclubs and things it just meant you had to travel into central to get to a good nightclub which can obviously be a bit more expensive but were really fun and were really great nights out but it did mean that if you are hoping to just be able to like walk down the street to a club or something or have like a huge row of clubs like they do in Bournemouth I guess like <laughs> they do in some towns or whatever have like a nightclub kind of little area in your town or university setting that's not really what Greenwich has Greenwich is quite like an old little town I guess in London so you would have to travel into London but I didn't find that it was too much of an issue but I know that is a concern for some people who again like to have the nightlife right on their doorstep which I completely understand but we had to spend a little bit of time traveling in and out to get our nightlife <laughs> Then the last thing I wanted to mention, which has been something I have also experienced this year because I've been driving into university since I moved further away, is the parking situation. So I think you can get permits for parking if you live like 
super far away but I think you do have to pay for those and I'm not sure how many they have available to give out and then in terms of the car parks next to the university they're very expensive I think it's like 50p for half an hour I don't know why they work out like that a pound an hour or so or maybe it's a pound a half an hour part no a pound for what am I trying to say let's start that again basically the car parks next to the university are very expensive and I think it's about one, oh it's one pound fifty for for 30 seconds no for the <laughs> what am I trying to say one pound fifty for half an hour which basically means it's three pounds an hour which is very expensive especially if you're there from like nine to five that's going to cost you a lot of money I think it's 20 pounds for an all-day ticket but even then that's not really the best it depends how much you're saving I guess from living at home or wherever you're traveling in from what I did was I used just park to find parking nearby I would usually park at Frick I forgot the name of the hotel the, the Ibis Ibis hotel and it would usually be about seven pounds for a full day which is obviously so much better than 20 pounds but I also did park in people's drives a few times as well but it just meant you could park really close to uni for a lot less money but it did mean you had to book that in advance you had to book it like the day before you headed into uni and there was one time where I had booked one and Christian took my car keys which meant I wasted money on a car parking space and couldn't go to uni because Christian had my car keys but it turned out alright it was fine but that is something to consider if you're hoping to drive in the parking facilities aren't the best but yeah they are all my pros and cons I have I've chatted for really really long I hope there was some useful information in that I feel like I just rambled for a very long time which I tend to do in these videos anyway so I'm sure you're used to it by now but I think the pros definitely do outweigh the cons like I always say I would recommend the University of Greenwich to anyone I really enjoyed my time there and I think it was exactly what I was looking for I think it is really important to kind of like make a list of priorities I guess when you're looking around universities and things and try and tick as many of those off but yeah just things to consider and kind of what works best for you I guess but I did want to be completely transparent in this video which I hope you appreciated and I hope can help some of you out there but if you did like this video please hit the thumbs up and subscribe down below because I'm currently posting three videos a week so if you're sat at home bored need some content to watch hit subscribe and hopefully I'll see you soon